Welcome to the Miracle Healing Boot Camp here at Miracle Healing School. This course is called uh, Miracle Healing 101 or MH 101. It's the Miracle Healing Boot Camp. And uh, it's a prerequisite to any other courses we teach here at the Miracle Healing School. So uh, just like boot camp is in the Army. So uh, welcome aboard. We hope you'll join us for further presentations. This is the first of 20 uh, presentations like you're seeing here um, dealing with or balancing theologies out that prevent health and wholeness. Theology just means thoughts about God and uh, the first uh, s situation we're going to try to balance out is the word salvation uh, and what it means and, and the three aspects of salvation. How do we balance these three aspects uh, as we read the Bible uh, toward miracle healing? I think the first uh, thing to understand is that the Greek word sozo, uh, which is often translated as salvation, or it can be translated uh, as, as the translators see fit in the context of the passage as deliverance or healing, it's used hundreds of times throughout the scripture. It's a major, major theme, and uh, it's one that if we just think about uh, nothing more than a ticket to heaven, when we see the word salvation, we're going to miss so much of what God's trying to communicate through the apostles or writers of the Bible who are actually thinking in Hebrew, writing in Greek, and now we're reading it in English. So let's look at this full gospel message that Paul claims, uh, uh, rightly so, that he was proclaiming. Uh, it's by the power of signs and miracles uh, that he was fully proclaiming the gospel of Christ. So this correlation that Paul draws uh, between the gospel or what we typically think of as salvation um, and then the healing or the miracles he was passively referring to in that passage as well. Uh, I've created a chart here. Uh, I basically used the chart we had before and I've added uh, kind of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich analogy to it. At top you'll see that I put the uh, jelly next to salvation. Uh, salvation is sweet and we are very thankful as Christians that are saved that are, that we're saved from uh, from going to hell when we die as a result of of Jesus's uh, substitutionary death of paying the penalty for our sin. But stopping there would be sort of like living our entire Christian life off of a sugar-filled food uh, like jam or jelly. When we read the Bible and we see these words, uh, we want to think about how connected they are, which is why you see the triangle there. Uh, deliverance um, at the bottom uh, right, you'll see I put peanut butter by that. Jesus prayed in the Our Father, deliver us from evil. And you know, you don't, you're not going to have a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich without peanut butter. It really sticks to your ribs. That's kind of the whole, the whole feature of the sandwich for many of us. Um, and in the same way, this course, we're going to be, it's really a discipleship course. Uh, that has signs and wonders of miracle healing following it. So the signs and wonders follow us as we follow Christ. Healing is the children's bread and you'll see that at left on the bottom. It's a funny story in the Bible. The person who uh, acknowledges that healing is the children's bread is actually someone outside of God's covenant. Um, but she cleverly uh, says that even the dogs eat the bread from the master's table. So we do heal unbelievers if they'll let us pray for them. And if you're watching this and you're not a Christian or you're not born again, just stay tuned. Uh, you're going to be learning the same thing the rest of us are. And uh, if you like, you can be transformed as he and healed as you watch. I think you'll see uh, in the coming slides that this whole salvation, this sozo salvation, works for everybody. Well, why isn't it working for everybody? Let's see. Hosea 4.6, down at the bottom of Young's Literal Translation, says, Cut off have been my people for lack of knowledge. And in, in uh, the Word English version above, it says, My people are destroyed. Or in another translation, it says, Perish for lack of knowledge. So it's, it's the fact that uh, so many people don't even know uh, the little bit of what I just presented, much less the rest of it in the, le in, in the remainder of this PowerPoint, uh, they're not even aware that healing is the children's spread uh, or, or any of the other things that we've, we've mentioned. So th the first thing we want to do is, is give the knowledge of the gospel, that is the full gospel, the whole gospel. And we're doing that by showing the balance between the three aspects of salvation, uh, or at least we call it sozo, and that is salvation, deliverance, and healing. Jesus provided these three aspects of sozo, uh, salvation, deliverance, and healing, in his uh, atonement. 
and we'll talk more about what that word means later, but we're basically talking about his perfect life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And what it, But what does that mean for us? Is that just a historical event? Uh, let me tell you what it means for us. It means that while obedient believers must suffer pain and persecution, including poverty potentially, at the hands of evil men, we can access, through the blood of Jesus, salvation for our spirits, uh, deliverance for our souls, uh, and many times manifesting from there in terms of physical healing uh, from disease. Peter said, if you suffer for doing good and endure it, it's commendable before God. So if you don't take a job with a crooked company, even though it's very, very high paying, that's good. Uh, it, Peter goes on to talk uh, about um, following Christ. He talks about sin uh, and Jesus uh, forgiving the people who sinned against him. Um, he talks about uh, not judging people, and in verse 24, he he kind of ties a lot of these uh, three concepts together by saying that, that Jesus bore our sins in his body on the tree or on the cross so that we might die to sins, which is part of deliverance, and live for righteousness. That means living for Jesus, living for Christ, who is our righteousness inside of us. Not by our own works, but by faith in him. Moving on in the scripture, by his wounds, that is, uh, his whippings that occurred before he went on the cross. That's part of why unbelievers are also healed in Jesus' name by his stripes. We have been healed. Another translation says that we were healed. The fact that we already all are healed is quite a fact to try to deal with, uh, and that's why I call it a truth. Because in our, in our common daily experience, for most of us, let's face it, let's just be honest, it's not a fact. We still have symptoms, uh, diseases, maladies, we call them, any kind of injury or uh, syndrome or anything that uh, we don't want to have. And uh, if we believe God is good, we believe uh, probably didn't come from Him. So we want the truth of God's whole salvation to become a fact in our life. But how? We know that the biggest issue is a lack of knowledge. So here's some knowledge for you right here. Let's look at grace. It's uh, equally appearing to all men. It's not individual. It can't be earned. And it provides salvation, deliverance, and healing. That's the finished work. You see over there on the right, you see the cross, and you see the world, because we know that Jesus died for the sins of the world, and uh, that all men would be saved, and that none would, be, would perish. So then, this grace is a finished work. God's, God's work in salvation, deliverance, and healing is finished, and he's resting. So, he's resting, what is he waiting for us to do? You see the little person there putting their hand up. That's faith. She's reaching into God's love for the world, his message, his gospel, right there in between the cross and the world. Uh, that's her individual response to God's global offer of grace. That's what faith is. It does vary, obviously, per individual, so not everybody's walking around saved, healed, and delivered. Uh, but faith appropriates God's grace on earth as it is in heaven works play a part in this. We don't want to have an empty religion where we're not actually doing anything and we're just trusting God to do everything. Uh, a marriage is a two-way street, uh, hopefully 50-50. If it's a good one, then we want to be a good bride of Christ. So let's look at works. First of all, they're prompted and empowered by grace. We're not uh, replacing God's grace with our works. We can't earn our healing. We can't earn our salvation. We can't earn our deliverance by good works, trying to please a God that's far away. But we demonstrate the saving faith of the Jesus Christ that we've already invited into our heart by letting him live through us and displaying uh, God's empowering grace, empowering us to do not just works that show that we have good character of love, patience, and kindness, and all of these aspects of the love of God flowing through us, but also miraculous works. So to summarize this entire chart, we would say that appropriating grace through faith produces miraculous work. So back to our question, why isn't all the all these facts a reality? Well, as you can see, this little person has got to raise her hand to go and grab it. it the Bible says that the kingdom of God is at hand. In another place it says it's advancing uh, as forceful men lay hold of it. So how do we be that kind of person? How can we bring God's promises to life here on earth through us? Well, the first step would be to bury uh, or, or treasure God's word in our hearts. So let's take a look at this salvation, deliverance, and healing all connected together in a, a few passages of scripture. Psalms 101, 
3, uh, I'm sorry, Psalms 103, verse 2 and 4, uh, says, don't forget all of his benefits, okay? But, and then he moves on to talk about salvation, healing, and deliverance. In other words, he's saying, don't, don't have one-third of the gospel. Get the whole thing. For, uh, verse 3, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit. So there's deliverance. So we see forgiveness of sins, of salvation. We see healing all diseases, not leaving any out, not being afraid of cancer, and redeems your life from the pit. We're talking about discipleship, deliverance, getting delivered from evil, and following Christ instead. In Matthew 8:16, when evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. Apparently these people had gone pretty far in, into uh, the demonic and were completely possessed. Uh, but that's okay. He drove out the spirits with a word. Just a word. Didn't even lay hands. And he healed all the sick. He didn't say, oh, I don't know about that one. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities. He grabbed them and carried our diseases. And he carried them off. Away from us and out of us. And that is something to be to receive and to be thankful for. Now, salvation, healing, and deliverance in the next scripture, you're going to notice. I just drew some arrows here between the three. It doesn't matter what order you go in here. Uh, sometimes people get healed first and out of thankfulness. They receive Christ in their heart. Uh, deliverance uh, can occur at, at, at different times through the different examples of scripture. Let's take a look. In Mark 6, 12, they went out and preached that people should repent. There you see salvation, verse 13. They drove out many demons, there you see deliverance, continuing on, and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them, there you see healing. All in these short little passages you see all these words together. Matthew 10.1, he called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority. Uh, question, are you a disciple? If you said yes, then look at this, you have authority to drive out evil, drive out evil, evil unclean spirits, and to heal every disease and sickness. So, there is no sickness that a disciple cannot heal. In Matthew 10, 7, as you go, preach this message. Preach salvation. The kingdom of heaven is near, like you saw in the diagram where the, the girl was putting her hand up to receive and bring the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Looking at the second bullet point here, the kingdom of heaven is near and is appropriated by faith as evidenced by works like this. John 14, 12. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Let me ask you something. Do you believe in Jesus? Okay. If you answered yes, read this scripture again and ask if, it's apply, if it applies to you and how much you're letting that power work in your life. If you want to let him work more in your life through you, stay tuned. We'll show you how. Here's how you release the salvation, deliverance, and healing that Christ has already provided inside of you. That is your choice to do that. And you can see in this diagram with the arrows how this circle spins around and produces good fruit in your life. And that good fruit includes miracle healing. It's important not to deny God the healer just because we're afraid of the topic of healing because it's controversial. We also don't want to deny God the deliverer. We had an otherwise good uh, circular diagram here, but when we deny any aspect of God, we get cut off. Just like the scripture says, you're cut off for lack of knowledge. Denying God the Savior is pretty rare for those that practice healing and deliverance, but the Bible does mention the seven sons of Sceva. Here's the definition of this word we've been talking about, sozo. Uh, saving, bringing salvation. It describes the grace of God, as we saw from the diagram based around Titus 2.11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. And the writer of Hebrews encourages us that Jesus Christ as the, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed, he won't change, and neither will his full gospel that's pictured here. How do we receive this full gospel message in our spirit, in our soul, and hopefully in our body? Uh, first of all, 
doing that is going to balance out our beliefs if we receive it in our spirit uh, that will come through our soul and balance thoughts and decisions and finally lead to, to balanced brain chemistry that will provide salvation deliverance and healing we hope you enjoyed that last video and we hope you enjoy the next one the, in the series that you might find at right if you're looking or uh, viewing this in YouTube I uh, would like to like tell you a little bit um, about the class that you can take uh, you just watched one of the lectures to our free online survey class uh, our textbook is free online at this gospel info um, and we hope that you can work through that at your own pace by yourself uh, without any help from us that's how it's designed however if you do need support or would like support feel free to reach out to us at miraclehealing.org for that um, you can get low-cost uh, tutoring uh, with regard to general questions or even your individual case at miraclehealing.org uh, also you can have us grade your exams uh, towards certification questions are usually answered um, as you progress through the curriculum at this link at the bottom uh, you can do that or you can just search the site for the word syllabus and find it additionally it's at the bottom left hand corner Any questions you might have, you can also search using the search feature of thisgospel.info, our online textbook. What is Miracle Healing 101? It's a discipleship course to bring salvation to your spirit, deliverance to your soul, and healing to your body. And the signs and wonders of Miracle Healing follow us as we follow Christ. It's a pretty big class, uh, but really a regular college class with 50 contact hours which would be three semester hours or um, five uh, quarter hours uh, there's 30 online presentations 20 of them you can get to right now um, the next 10 you will have to uh, pass exam so I do encourage you uh, as you work through the syllabus at the bottom link on your screen right now uh, that you uh, either type or, or keep track of your answers in some way so that uh, you can make it to the next level and uh, get some information that's password protected all our course materials are free and online uh, and we'd encourage you to progress at your own pace with those uh, let's take a look at our services at miraclehealing.org um, we do have an e-healing account service which is a, a, a way for you to um, get healed uh, yourself uh, with individualized online diagnostic healing tools that will give you specific scriptures not only um, for your profile or your or your particular disease but also for your um, specific uh, case. Uh, healing others is uh, something that you're definitely going to want to, um, or healing yourself, you're probably going to want to also uh, take our class, which you can do for free, but if you're looking to pass exams towards uh, certification and get a, a higher level or, or really any support in that from us, you will need an e-learning account for that. So we encourage you to hit us up at miraclehealing.org and become a, a registered learner. Uh, stay covered uh, after you finish that class with the online coach service that you uh, might be doing street miracles and have some questions that come up that are not answered uh, through the website which is free for everyone and you can ping us that way. Um, pacing yourself uh, through the curriculum doesn't always work for everyone. We have some ways for our registered learners to kind of uh, have a certain um, pace and keep on track and uh, we support you in that as you go through uh, this curriculum. So please feel free to ping us. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, God bless you as you continue in your pursuit of miracle healing through the Jesus Christ of the Bible. I'd encourage you to go ahead and start working through our uh, course syllabus at this link. Uh, if that's too much of a uh, commitment for you right now in terms of uh, time or ability, we would like to encourage you just to look at the next video in the series. Uh, try to go in order and uh, you'll be uh, better prepared and have a jump start for when you do uh, become available uh, for the online course, either in the free or the supported version. Thanks again and God bless.